everyone, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com and today I'm bringing a short Q&A session to you that has a couple different topics that I've pulled to put together and I like to do that once in a while and just get a variety of things that are going on in the world to uh, share with you. So I will go ahead and get started. The first one says, hi Lynn, I'm traveling, cannot pose a question through the blog. So they sent me an email, it says, could you do a reading on can we expect normal weather patterns until December? The spring's been rather cold in the southern hemisphere is expecting a grim autumn. So I wanted to think about this. I was thinking about 2020, what's going on with the weather, and I just see a lot of extreme changes in weather. You know, we used to have a definitive spring and autumn, but now it's like we go straight from from winter into summer and summer into winter. We don't really have a gradual transition. And it it just doesn't feel as though we have four changing seasons. It's, it's like two long seasons with a very abbreviated spring and autumn. And I used to see spring and autumn as traditional transitional seasons, but sometimes in just the last a few days or even a few, few short weeks. And the quick transitions look to be a new cycle that continues way beyond 2020. The Southern hemisphere looks to continue with their grim autumn and the Northern counterpart has a very short lived spring. I get many regions in North and South even have some weeks that feel like you have all four seasons in the same week. You might have your furnace on one day, open the windows the next, the next day your air is on, then you go back to your furnace. Who knows? It just, it feels very random, very erratic, and very abbreviated transition going from the, the summer to the winter and back and forth. I see a few factors that drive this because I really want to know what's the deal with this? What is really causing all this? And our Earth has constant magnetosphere fluctuations and this impacts our atmosphere. It also impacts how the sun affects us. In some instances, the atmosphere retains warmth like a blanket and other situations, the atmosphere, it isn't as insulating. And that's what's happening dur during the summer and during the winter, but there's no real general transition between the two. The amount of weather manipulation is also taking a big toll on the earth. I see extreme weather being targeted to civilized areas more than the unpopulated regions, courtesy of the chemtrails. Many chemtrails, they fall to the earth, the chemicals within them fall, but there's still some residual elements that remain in the atmosphere. And those remaining chemicals react to the greater intensity of the sun and the occasional heart beam to further promote the unusual weather when compared to decades ago. So I get that that's what's happening. We're, we're through a transitional period with Earth and the magnetosphere, but then we also have these man-made chemicals being constantly put into the atmosphere, which just compounds the effect. Okay, changing gears a little, and I just want to put a shout out out there that even though I live in the United States and a lot of topics I get are based around the United States, there's other stuff going on all over the world. So if you live somewhere else and have a question, or if you live in the States and have a question about other places, feel free to ask those as well. I'm always happy to tap into other areas of the world to see what's going on. So moving forward here, this person had asked me, and they said today in the Financial Times British newspaper, they published an article stating that Bolsonaro, which I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong. He's leading Brazil into a disaster. So he's a leader in Brazil. Does this statement resonate with you? And if yes, will they try a military coup d'etat? Besides the beer bug issues, he's facing political problems, many of which he created himself. Once we're facing very peculiar times, he might be the bitter remedy to prevent even more stuff, like a one world government takeover here. So you know, thinking about him as a leader, and just in general, I got that, like most leaders, I see both positive and challenging aspects to his leadership. He's a very conservative person. He leads with that mentality, what he has on his mind, what his opinion is. That's the driving force of his leadership. He's passionate about his beliefs, and he truly thinks that Brazil would benefit from adopting his belief system, even creating laws. The challenge is when you take away personal beliefs and you build laws on your own belief system without really taking into consideration everybody else and how they feel and what's going on, and you impose them on this large scale and eliminate personal freedoms, people are slowly going to reject what you say, both the positive elements of what you say and the negativity aspects of what you say. So that's the real challenge he has. He's, he's focused on his his way of believing and moving forward with that 
without really considering the way other people might feel because he feels his ways best. So, I get he does have a good vision for Brazil, but his approach has created huge problems for himself. I do get that his stern personality is going to prevent Brazil from being consumed by one world government, which that itself is a positive, and his idea on the economy is going to help boost Brazil. The real issue is the social unrest tied to his personal, to the personal freedoms and equality that I mentioned earlier. So where his belief system differs from other people, that's going to be the big source of a lot of social issues that he's creating. I get that Brazil is on the radar of the powers that were too, because any country that is conservative, any ultra conservative country is an economic threat and gets their attention as a possible rival. And I get the powers that were play into the social unrest and also send destabilizing forces there for him to deal with. And if any of you've ever heard of an economic hitman or there's a movie out there, I think based on economic hitman, basically what they do is they send people in and they intentionally destabilize governments. I got that a very similar behavior is occurring, only it's not forced on the economy. It's forced on just social unrest and that people are being sent there courtesy of the powers that were to create social unrest because they don't want some country that is strong being built that could be an enemy of what their one world government is. If you are resisting it, then you are an enemy. So I got that people are being sent there to create personal and emotional havoc on the country and just creating an out, out spiral of events. So that's what I got in regards to him. I definitely think he's got a lot on his plate right now and there's going to be a lot more social unrest before this is over. Okay, last question I pulled here. It says, pay attention to what they call new normality. It's purely a new world organization term as shown on the UN's new website. And I have a link to their website on my blog if you want to go check it out for yourself. And Immediately, yes, and I've been saying this to other people too, that the powers that were, they want the term new normal in our vocabulary. They want face mask, and I was meditating on the whole face mask thing, and I heard this phrase during a meditation, that they're just like the Western hijab. It's like, you're t it's like the new form of control or some element to that. It was really interesting how, in my mind, I, I got that term and I related it to the control that other countries that, um, have more control of their people, even control what they wear and things like that. So anyway, they want face masks, they want the social distancing, they want the, the fear out there, they want to be able to have the ability to command random guidelines as part of our world. There is only abnormal, which is now, and old normal, which is pre-beer bug. Don't let the term normal connect to anything that's happening currently, because it's not. There is nothing normal about this. Our subconscious and our collective need to maintain clarity of what is normal, what is abnormal and what is pre-beer bug as being the more normal state of being. So always be mindful of that when you hear the term, think about what that really means. Anyway, that was really all I had. I hope you enjoyed this reading, this little medley of topics that I pulled here. Um, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm always interested to know what you're thinking or what's going on in your part of the world. So Again, thanks for listening. Again, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Thanks. Bye.